Hello. Today I would like to have another semi-incoherent ramble. The subject of today's ire is an article I read. This article presented the thesis that the Iroquois were cannibals. As evidence of this thesis, it presented an uncritical reading of the Jesuit relations. Now, I would like to address not the subject of this article, not the arguments presented. In fact, I think the arguments can be dismissed simply on methodological grounds. It is the methodology of this article that I would like to talk about. This is the subject I find truly interesting. So why do I believe I can throw out his arguments? Well, because they are based on an uncritical reading of the Jesuit relations. The Jesuit relations are a heavily biased source. In fact, I think the Jesuit relations are so biased that they cannot be relied upon for information of this kind. Why is that? Because they were Christian missionaries coming from a nation which was enemies with the Iroquois, existing within the power structures of colonialism and burgeoning capitalism. In short, it was in the Jesuits' interest to paint the people they encountered in as negative a light as possible. If, for example, the Jesuits can paint the people they encounter as unrepentant barbarians, then their Christian mission becomes all the more important. And if, inversely, the Jesuits report that, well, these people are just ordinary people leading ordinary lives and getting on with their ordinary lives in ordinary ways, if the Jesuits find that people can be decent without Christ, this calls their whole religion into question, right? If they're decent without Christ, then what right do we have to convert them? So on and so forth. So we can say that any negative moral judgments that the Jesuits make about the people they encounter simply cannot be trusted. The Jesuits have got too much skin in this game. When the Jesuits refer to these people, they believe in need of conversion as cannibals, or else these people who refuse to be converted as cannibals. We should no more trust this statement than the statement of a baker who claims that the key problem of society is that people are not buying enough bread. I do not only reject this article in terms of its methodological grounds, I reject this article in terms of its core presumptions. Its core presumption being that a cannibal tribe is a thing that could or did exist. I do not believe there were any cannibal tribes. Right? Now that is not to say I do not believe cannibalism didn't happen, but if an American airplane goes and crashes in the Andes and people start eating each other because there's no food, this does not make the United States of America a cannibal tribe, right? Instances of cannibalism do not make a cannibalist society, so on and so forth. I reject the notion of a cannibal tribe for similar reasons why I reject this article in question. All of the evidence of cannibal tribes comes from sources which are biased to the point of being unreliable. So for example, the Spaniards go down into the Caribbean, South America, Central America, and they start causing all kinds of trouble. So the Queen of Spain, she issues a proclamation. She says, okay, all of you guys, you got to start treating these Indians decently. Unless they're cannibals. If they're cannibals, you can enslave them, kill them, do whatever you want to them. But if they're not cannibals, you got to treat them decently. Thus, the Spaniards have a direct economic incentive to describe everyone they encounter as cannibals. If I can describe them as cannibals, if I... Here's some people that no one's ever seen and nobody's ever going to correct me on. If I say, well, they're cannibals, then I can enslave them. And slaves are very profitable. So on and so forth. The Spanish sources cannot be trusted in this way. Similar to how the Jesuits cannot be trusted. Same as how the English cannot be trusted and the Dutch and so on and so forth. None of these explorers can be trusted to make this kind of judgment because it is in their direct economic interest to do so. There is a saying that history is a collection of lies agreed upon. I believe the notion of the cannibal tribe to be something similar to this. Now, I do not believe that this necessarily comes from malice. Certainly, the colonial powers had a direct economic incentive to treat the people they encountered as cannibals. However, there are also indirect incentives which derive from the power structures of the day. So let's say, for example, that some explorer goes over to the New World and he's keeping a memoir so that when he returns home, he can get it published and maybe pay for his retirement. In this situation, he has a direct economic incentive to make his memoir as interesting as possible. Now, we see exaggeration and just outright fantasy all the time throughout the early colonial literature. We find accounts of Seneca Falle, Cyclopses, Monopods, etc. 
One source described the peoples of the New World as wearing armor made out of seahorse skins. Or of chainmail, made from wood, treated with magic to be harder than steel. So on so forth. People exaggerate because exaggeration sells books. People also exaggerate because that's human nature. People like to big themselves up. Let's say some explorer goes over to New France and he has a hard old time of it. Right? He loses one of his toes due to frostbite and after 10 years or so he goes home. He goes back to France and somebody looks at him and says, hey, how did you lose your toe? It isn't a very good story to say, well, I was cold and it was really cold and I was cold and then my toe fell off. That's not a very good story. Much better story to say, well, I was attacked by cannibals and the cannibals, they all bowled me to the ground and one of them, they started biting on my feet and one of them, he bit my toe and he just ripped it clean off. He ripped it clean off and then he stood up and he just grinned at me with this smug look on his face. So I took my cutlass and I chopped his head off. Right? That's a good story. There's this word I like called the hyperreal. Now, I can never understand Baudrillard, so I don't know if I'm using this word correctly, but regardless, this is my definition of it. That is, something which is more real than real. Something that's better than real. Right? A compelling lie that people adopt because it's compelling. So to give an example, um, this is from a lecture by a fellow called Rick Roderick. He says that because the Jurassic Park films exist, you would be disappointed if you saw a real dinosaur, right? They're not as big, they're not as aggressive, they're not as scary. Real dinosaurs, they'd be disappointing compared to Jurassic Park. So too, any narrative of an island adventure would be disappointing without some cannibal tribes thrown in for good measure, right? I think the notion of the cannibal tribe is just a... It's a lie that became a cliché, and from the cliché it became truth in the public's eyes, right? It's not real, but it's hyper-real, right? So on and so forth. An afterword. Here and there on the internet you can find some video or whatever of a couple of dude bros going down to visit the last cannibal tribe in New Guinea or whatever. Even this supposedly concrete evidence of cannibal tribes I believe are subject to the prior considerations. There's this old scientific paradox that anything you observe, you alter. Anything observed is altered by your presence. Now, I believe that this so-called last remaining cannibal tribe might be an example of that. I've also spoken previously about weaponizing stereotypes. Considering all of this, is it not possible that this so-called last remaining cannibal tribe is just trying to attract tourists? Consider, it's easy money. All you have to do is play the barbarian for a couple of hours and these rich idiot tourists will come in and take their photos and give you lots of money, right? So on and so forth. I read some brief account of some woman who was captured by the Ojibwe and held prisoner. And it reads like something out of The Princess Bride. Every day before bed, the Ojibwe would come to her and say, oh, Good night, sleep well, I'll most likely eat you in the morning. But he never did eat her. Eventually she was let go and went back to her people and told her story. Right? All these no good scary Indians, they were, they were trying to eat me, but I was never fat enough for them or whatever. This seems like a very effective tactic of psychological warfare. What is an effective way to scare somebody? Well, maybe playing up to their existing fears. Even 300 years ago, this hyper-real idea of the cannibal had started to take hold. Now, I could continue at great length. I could talk about how cannibalism is impractical from a socio-political angle. I could talk about how it's impractical from a simple material angle. But other people can do that in probably better detail than I can. And I've rambled on long enough as is. I hope you found some part of this interesting. Um, thank you for listening.